Okay, welcome back Year 13. In this video we're going to be looking at a specific part of the NEA which concerns the evaluation, right? So just so that you know where we are, as with episode 1, we are on the main AQA website, we're down in the assessment uh, resources and then we are looking at the same three NEAs as we were on episode 1. Just want to first to show you the MART scheme. This is the MART scheme that both your teachers and external moderators used to mark UNEA and we're in area four, conclusions, evaluation and presentation. And this is the section here you want to be looking at. So really you want to be looking at the level threes and the level fours in terms of to aim at. And the assessment criteria is to evaluate and reflect on fieldwork investigations, explain how the results relate to the wider context and show an understanding of the ethical dimensions of field research. For level four, a student will have an effective evaluation and reflection on the fieldwork investigation, a complete explanation of how the results relate to the wider context, although that's more to do, I guess, with the conclusion, and then thorough understanding of the ethical dimensions of field research. Right, and we're going to focus mainly on the effective evaluation bit through looking at these three exemplars, which I'll talk you through, uh, but we'll also look at the ethical dimensions part, which, if you think about the NEA being preparation for um, later life and university, the ethical dimensions of research in general, whether that be in geography or in other fields, it's very important for researchers to consider. And as soon as you start undertaking the NEA, you do become a researcher yourself. So we'll look at the first example. This is its evaluation section. We'll read through it together and then we will, uh, or rather I will comment on the parts which I like and which um, they're showing signs of, of hitting those strands of the mark scheme. So just read the first paragraph to yourself and then I'll start commenting on what's good about it. Okay, so first of all, uh, evaluation to some people implies just the negative things, right? So just looking at how is what I did not great, how could I have improved it? But it also involves actually um, you giving yourself a little bit of a pat on the back and saying that actually some of the data which I used and some of the sources which I which I explored were actually quite useful. So it says here, social and environmentally, the primary and secondary data clearly reveals a general trend in that through the diversion of traffic away from Kings Kowell, negative issues associated with high volume roads have been alleviated. Right. So there's a clear this is the data which I explored and actually in relation to my study, in relation to the aims of my study, my sub questions then actually that data has been quite useful. All right, let's go on to the second paragraph where it becomes a little bit a little bit more critical. So it starts very clearly by saying, however, there are some clear limitations to the validity of my methodology. Validity, reliability, how representative something is are words that you want to use in your NEA because they show that you have an understanding of the whole fieldwork process and that you can be actually critical of your work, but also with a, with a hint of here's how I could have done it better, here's how this uh, research could have been constructed in a more uh, valid way or reliable way, and in fact, accurate way as well. So here they talk about how roads and pathways are almost never in a perfectly straight line. Therefore, this would have affected their results, which therefore then affects their ability to draw conclusions. And then they talk about some things which they haven't considered. So this did not include consideration for the topology of the two wards. All right, then we have in the third paragraph here, a reflection on the sample, sample size. So they talk about it being a small sample size. And they talk about the repeatability of the investigation. Those of you who do uh, science will be familiar with that concept, which is to what extent um, could my investigation be repeated and get still get the same results. And then this speaks obviously to the, the reliability of your results. And they talk about how on another day with a larger number of data, data sets, a different result may have been produced which is them suggesting something which may not be necessarily true, but again, that it shows that they are reflecting on what could have happened had they gone at a different time, a different day, a different month, etc. And they also talk about their house price data in some postcodes because they believe the sample size was particularly small. 
and it says here, as a result, the true average property value in each selected postcode may have been inaccurately represented. So they're therefore they're talking about accuracy and to what extent are their results representative of the whole population. They now become quite specific and talk about noise pollution data and the fact that it took place during a very busy Friday evening during rush hour. Then they go on to discuss how this would have affected the actual results and generated particularly high noise levels. And they talk about how, what could have been. So how could they have done it otherwise? But then they also talk about how they tried to mitigate this. So however, this was somewhat mitigated as the collection of data took place during half term. So there would be less school traffic on the road. Subsequently, it can be expected the noise levels would be slightly less than a normal time. Finally, they get on to their social media survey. And they talk about how the methodology of it can be brought into question. They talk about selection of people here, about people perhaps not being truthful in, in that they could be outsiders. And they talk about how the fact that they had a large number of participants kind of even this out. And that those people who perhaps were not being truthful um, became lost in the average. Okay, so that's that bit before we move on to ethical issues on the evaluation. Let's look at the evaluation of this NEA a little bit shorter this time around. Have a read of it first, and then I'll start chatting through it. Okay, so they talk first of all about their sampling strategy. It's always good to evaluate um, to pick apart the, the negatives and the positives, the pros and the cons of your sampling strategy. So they want they went for, for systematic sampling with the use of a grid. And they said that it provided a good spatial coverage, but there were areas of the ward which were underrepresented. Right? So when they're drawing then a conclusion of the whole of Bangletown, of the whole of Spitalfields, they then are not really able to say that their results reflect the whole of Spitalfields or Bangletown which is fair enough, as most studies can't really be truly representative uh, unless they're really, really quite big. Then they talk about a really, really clear uh, limitation of most surveys which involve an opinion, the fact that they are quite subjective in nature. They talk about how judgments made about places were made by just one person and the data may be biased due to subjectivity and personal background. Right, uh, A clear way to counteract this, and it's not really mentioned here, is that several people could do an environmental quality survey or a, a decay survey, whatever's being done here, and that you can uh, find an average of the results to sort of try and counteract that. Then talk about how actually, in some ways, it was reliable because it was done by the same person on the same day. And they talk about how they couldn't have done every single study at the same time because obviously it was just one person and they were by themselves. And then they talk about how what else they could have done. So this was a broad piece of fieldwork. Much more could have been investigated. Obviously, they are students, so they have time constraints and they can't do everything. But they talk about what they could have potentially done. And then just back up here, they talk about, as I said, for the earlier NEA, you don't need to just talk about the negatives and how this was bad and it was not good, not accurate, etc. You can focus on the positives. So they talk about the IMD and the census data as providing a good snapshot of the socioeconomic characteristics of the area. So this one takes uh, the approach of evaluating the methods, the results, and the conclusions. So we'll go bit by bit. They start by making a general statement. So overall, I think that my methods of data collection were reliable as I apply them consistently at each site. And I also consider the sampling method that I would use at each site. They then talk about which improvements they would have made. 
and then talk about why that might not have been the case. So they talk about time constraints, which I just mentioned earlier. And they talk about how they could have extended their research. So what could they have done further to either explore a different part of the same question or to just extend and get more data and therefore make their conclusions not only more accurate, but really ultimately more representative too. Okay, they then talk about the results and the conclusions. So you can have a read a bit of this yourself. Okay, let's move on to the ethical issues, which are covered quite well in this one, so we'll start with this one. Now, this bit here, the ethical issues, just really gets you to reflect on who you are as the researcher, how that might have affected uh, what you could have done in the first place, what could or could not have happened in the field, what you could and could not have done, and all those things. This is particularly um, pertinent when you're thinking of human geography fieldwork, particularly human geography fieldwork, which goes on to study deprivation or sensitive issues such as urban poverty and things like that. And, and sometimes actually gentrification and regeneration on which people have very, very strong views. They talk about how they needed to consider their own health and safety. The fact that some of the residents may not have spoken English. And that whilst conducting the, the questionnaires, he or she had to be impartial about their responses and made it clear that not, they were grateful for their time. So it's not a case where they were asking leading questions or they were overtly open about their own opinion to be able to influence the people that they were speaking to. And there's a lot here about being quite careful about the things that I said. So if you take the last couple of lines, when completing the surveys, we noted down the scores on paper only and did not make any negative comments about the study areas. Photographs were taken of the environment, not of the people, which is obviously a basic good rule of thumb when, when conducting research. Then we can look at this one. They talk here about what they were doing walking around the area um, could have aroused suspicion and they talk about how they mitigated this so by not staying in one area for too long and they talk about how the fact that it could be unfair to comment on someone's quality of life simply based on the impact of construction of a high volume road you know a piece of work like this unlike this other one too are very careful and clearly our students who have considered the fact that the topics that they're covering are quite sensitive. So people's quality of life, deprivation, gentrification, etc. and regeneration in this one. So these are all very, very sensitive topics which affect real people in real places. So therefore they have to be quite careful about what they do, what they write and what they say. So if we just go back then to the mark scheme. I've just showing you two examples which go through the evaluation of methods, results and conclusion in their own different ways. And how what they do is they identify what wasn't so accurate and wasn't so reliable, how this would have affected results and conclusions, what they could have done better, and perhaps how they could have furthered their study. Then they go on to talk about the ethical dimensions of research and they cover all sorts of things in that. So this is a very, very important part of your NEA. It should really have its own section, its own two sections perhaps, uh, and that's not even having covered the conclusions, which are also a very, very important part of the NEA. So hopefully that's been useful in helping you think about the evaluation and the ethical dimensions of your research.